Hello everyone and welcome to the service for June the 7th. Uh, I greet you this morning from the backyard at St. Giles with the um, crab apple tree behind me and the labyrinth. Um, and of course you're always more than welcome to come here to the backyard to enjoy um, both the, the, the labyrinth, the shade and the sunshine and to, to have some time of um, peace and quiet if you like. Um, today is my last service that I'll be leading as the minister of St. Giles. And so uh, it is my hope and, and prayer uh, that this service will be a blessing um, for you um, today. Um, so welcome for the worship service as you join us today on June the 7th. Good morning everyone and welcome once again to the service for June the 7th. Uh, as I mentioned um, in the introduction this morning, um, today will be my last service as the minister here at St. Giles. Um, after this week, um, mostly Reverend Rod Ferguson and Fiona Wilkinson will be leading the services um, for you. Um, so once again, just um, thank you to everyone for, for the, um, listening to the services and of course for all of those of you who came to, to St. Giles and supported the ministry over the last um, nine years and a bit. And I will um, say again a, a, farewell, a farewell, um to you um, later next week as my last day in the office will be on Friday. My friends, as you know that the service is responsive and so we do have the responses will appear right here in this corner uh, for the call to worship and also for the first prayer. So my friends, without further ado, please join me in our responsive call to worship. Let us worship God, our light and our salvation. The Lord is the stronghold of our lives. We desire to live in God's house and to see God in his holy temple. We have come with shouts of joy to sing and to make music to the Lord. Let us worship God in spirit and in truth. Teach us your ways and make straight our paths in this hour of worship and always. My friends, please join me in our responsive prayer. We give thanks to you, God, our Father, for mercy that reaches out, for patience that waits our returning, for your love that is ever ready to welcome sinners. We praise you that in Jesus Christ you came to us with forgiveness and that by your Holy Spirit you move us to repent and receive your love. Though we are sinners, you are faithful and worthy of all praise. We praise you, great God, in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love, according to your abundant mercy, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Against you, you alone have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight, so that you are justified in your sentence and blameless when you pass judgment. You desire truth in the inward being. Therefore, teach me wisdom in my secret heart. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and put a new and right spirit within me. Do not cast me from your presence and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. In Jesus' name we pray, saying together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen.
friends, we have two scripture readings this morning, and the first one is from Ruth um, chapter 1, and then from Proverbs chapter 3. Let us read together, Ruth chapter 1. In the days when the judges ruled, there was a famine in the land, and a certain man of Bethlehem in Judah went to live in the country of Moab, he and his wife and two sons. The name of the man was Elimelech, and the name of his wife Naomi, and the names of his two sons were Malon and Kilion. They were Ephrathites from Bethlehem in Judah. They went into the country of Moab and remained there, but Elimelech, the husband of Naomi, died, and she was left with her two sons. These took Moabite wives. The name of the one was Orpah, and the name of the other, Ruth. When they had lived there about ten years, both Malon and Kilion also died, so that the woman was left without her sons and her husband. Then she started to return with her daughters-in-law from the country of Moab, for she had heard in the country of Moab that the Lord had considered his people and given them food, So she set out from the place where she had been living, she and her two daughters-in-law. And they went on their way to go back to the land of Judah. But Naomi said to her two daughters-in-law, Go back, each of you, to your mother's house. May the Lord deal kindly with you, as you have dealt with the dead and with me. The Lord grant that you may find security, each in in, in the house of your husband. Then she kissed them, and they wept aloud. They said to her, No, we will return with you to your people. But Naomi said, Turn back, my daughters. Why will you go with me? Do I still have sons in my womb that they may become your husbands? Turn back, my daughters. Go your way, for I am too old to have a husband. Even if I thought there was hope for me, even if I should have a husband tonight and bear sons, would you then wait until they were grown? Would you then refrain from marrying? No, my daughters. It has been far more bitter for me than for you, because the hand of the Lord has turned against me. Then they wept aloud again, or kissed her mother-in-law, but Ruth clung to her. So she said, See, your sister-in-law has gone back to your people and to her... So she said, See, your sister-in-law has gone back to her people and to her gods. Return after your sister-in-law. But Ruth said, Do not press me to leave you or to follow back from following you. For where you go, I will go. Where you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people and your God, my God. Where you die, I will die. There I will be buried. May the Lord do thus to me and more as well, if even death parts me from you. When Naomi saw that, Ruth was determined to go with her. She said no more to her. And then from Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and do not rely on your own insight. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he will make your path straight. My friends, the grass wither and the flowers fade, but the word of our Lord endures forever. Thanks be to God. I remember it like it was just yesterday. My brother, sister-in-law, and I went to Montreal to the Presbyterian College to meet with the Director of Pastoral Studies, the Reverend Dr. Clyde Irvine. My brother and I both applied to attend seminary, and part of the application process was to meet with Clyde. I remember sitting in his office and and, and chatting with him as we got to uh, get to know each other at the time, and then Clyde all of a sudden said something that made me turn as white as a sheet, at least according to my sister-in-law, I was as white as a sheet. And Clyde said to me, Dewald, I would like you to lead a worship service and to preach your first sermon before you start your studies at the Presbyterian College. I remember that first worship service. I was a nervous wreck. You could see my pants shaking today. My pants don't shake anymore, but my high hands get ice ice cold. It was the first Sunday of Lent at St. Stephen's Presbyterian Church in Peterborough. And the text I use was Ruth chapter 1, with a focus on verse 16 and 17. The title of the message, Choices. Today, 
more than 17 years later, I would like to use the same text that started the journey to congregational ministry as my journey in congregational ministry comes to an end, or at the very least, is taking a bit of a break. Ruth chapter 1, verse 16 and 17. <coughs> but Ruth said, Do not press me to leave you or to turn back from following you. Where you go, I will go. Where you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people, and your God, my God. Where you die, I will die, and there I will be buried. May the Lord do thus to me, and more as well, if even death parts me from you. <coughs> For whatever reason, Ruth's story has always been very close to my heart. In fact, this was the very first text that um, I shared with somebody when I was about 13 years old to an elderly couple um, during when the thing we had to do for our junior youth group. And they then afterwards called um, the minister of our church back in South Africa to tell them how much they appreciated um, the text I read and then my, my little um, uh, story about it. And so. I wonder, too, if we realize how much Ruth's story can still teach us today. See, Ruth didn't know God at the beginning of her life. She married into a family who knew God. Ruth's own family adhered to philosophies and teachings of different gods and goddesses. She was, after all, a Moabite. Naomi, who becomes Ruth's mother-in-law, and her family found themselves in the land of Moab because of the circumstances they were in. There was a drought in Judah and Bethlehem, and so the family chose between hunger, famine, death, starvation, or to move. And now they found themselves in a foreign land, in the land of Moab. Then Naomi's husband died. And she has still two sons, and they can take care of their mother. And not long after that, the two sons took married local girls, two local girls, Orpah and Ruth. And then about a decade after that, both of Naomi's sons died. Naomi, in that time, of course, would have no one to take care of her. Other, of course, than her daughters-in-law. And in those days, this was not a good situation to be in. Naomi had a choice. She could stay in Moab, where she's been living for now more than 10 years, and hope that both Orpah and Ruth's family will have pity on her and care for her. Or she could go back to her own family, who live still in Bethlehem and Judah now that she has heard that the famine is over. Naomi chose to go back to her family. Now, I guess Naomi actually had a very good relationship with her daughters-in-law, at least that's the way it seems like, because when she told them that she was going to go back, both of them at first said, no, we will go with you. They were adamant at it. Orpah and Ruth could choose to stay with the familiar customs, cultures, food of Moab, or the unfamiliar going to the land of Judah, to the town of Bethlehem. They chose, at first, to trust Naomi and to go with her. And when they got close to the border, Naomi once again turned to Orpah and Ruth to make sure that, you know, these girls know what they're doing, that they're going into the unknown, and that is what they truly wanted. <coughs> and when we read the text in Ruth, we can see that the air is filled with emotion. The three of them cried. They loved each other. They trusted each other. <coughs> and yet, there was a choice to be made. As we know, Orpah at the end chose to go back to the familiar, while Ruth chose to head into the unknown and to embrace, embrace something completely different. Ruth didn't know how the story would unfold. Ruth did not know if Naomi's people will accept her. She did not know if she and Naomi would be worse off in Bethlehem than they were in Moab. So many unknowns. And yet, Ruth chose 
to go with Naomi. She said, Ruth said, <coughs> Do not press me to leave you or to turn back from following you. Where you go, I will go. Where you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people, your God, my God. Where you die, I will be die. There will I be buried. May the Lord do thus to me and more as well, if even death parts me from you. My friends, we have a choice. Jesus comes to us and asks us what we would choose. To go back to the familiar or to walk the unfamiliar path with him. How will we answer? Today is a very hard day. It's my last service as the minister at St. Giles. My family and I have choices to make as we now move forward. But more so, the people of St. Giles have choices to make as this family of faith move forward. And the choices that face this family of faith can kind of be summed up as the familiar or the unfamiliar. <coughs> like Orpah and Ruth, this family of faith is walking with Christ, who is our Lord and Savior. And still, the question comes, St. Giles, are you ready and willing to follow me wherever it may lead? Or do you like to go back to the familiar, what you are used to? <coughs> My friends, this is, this is a hard choice. Because your instinct is to say, let's stick with what we know. After all, what we know has worked, and why fix something when it's not broken? But let's think about this for a moment. Orpah perhaps reasoned the same way, way back when. When push come to shove, why leave the land of Moab? Why not go back to what she is used to, to what is familiar to her? Yes, her life and outlook on life has changed because um, she met Naomi and her family and she got uh, exposed to who God is. But so why now, why would she want to go back to what she was used to before? And yet because of Orpah's choice to go back, we never hear about Orpa again. Ruth, on the other hand, <coughs> Ruth, on the other hand, even though she faced the same dilemma, chose to leave what she was used to behind and move towards an unfamiliar future. Would Naomi's family welcome her? What would she do in Bethlehem? What will happen on the road to Naomi's hometown? There were so many unknowns that Ruth faced. So many unknowns. And yet she chose that unfamiliar path. She chose to trust. She chose to have faith in Naomi. And guess what? Ruth became a very important individual within the community of God's people. Is St. Giles ready and willing to follow Christ wherever he is leading this congregation? Is St. Giles ready to follow Christ if Christ's leading is perhaps an unfamiliar path? My friends, I know. I know that choices are never easy. And when we have two or more options, it becomes all the more difficult. At this time, you may wonder, what will happen at St. Giles? What direction will this congregation go? What does the future hold? I know that you would like answers, concrete answers. Perhaps you hope that I may offer you an answer today. My friends, I do believe, though, that an answer was offered. Follow Christ wherever he may lead this congregation. And how do we know where Christ is leading this congregation? What if there are several roads to travel on? Again, I understand the dilemma. I do. 
So let me offer you advice from Scripture. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 and 6. <coughs> Trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not lean on your own understanding. In all of your ways, acknowledge God, and God will make your paths straight. See, my friends, what is important in the life of the Christian community is that we trust God. And now let me ask you this question. What is one of the first signs, one of the very first signs that we trust someone? It's to listen. We listen to those whom we trust. To trust God with all of our hearts means to listen to God speaking to us through the Holy Spirit. And it is also important that we pray both as individuals and as a community of faith, so that we will discern God's leading, God's leading through the Holy Spirit in our lives personally and the life of the congregation as a whole. As a faith community, what is our first priority? Now, those of you who remember their catechism classes from many, many years ago would undoubtedly say the chief end of man is to glorify God and enjoy Him forever, forever or in um, vernacular today. Our highest priority in life is to praise God and to love God forever. <coughs> My friends, to praise God and to love God forever, that is to acknowledge God. Yes, a new day is dawning, and we do not know what this new day will bring. However, we do know that God is always with us. So perhaps these words from the song, 10,000 Reasons, Bless the Lord, is perhaps important for us today. It's the second verse. It says, the sun comes up, it's a new day dawning. It's time to sing God's song again. Whatever may pass and whatever lays before me, let me be singing when the evening comes. My friends, as you now continue your journey as a congregation, remember the story of Ruth. And remember to trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge God and God will make your path straight. Amen and Amen.
friends, let us join our hearts together in prayer. Let us pray. Praise the Lord. Our soul praises you, O Lord. We will sing praises to you as long as we live. We will not put our trust in our government or in influential people. For when they die, their influence and their power are gone. We are blessed because we hope and trust in you. O oh God, you created the world and everything in it. You are a faithful God to our spiritual fathers, to Abram, Isaac, and Jacob. And you remain unchanging and faithful to us in this century and on to the end of time. You uphold those of us who are weighted down with the cares of this world. And you feed those who are hungry with the bread of life. You set prisoners free with the assurance that their sins are forgiven and that you are in control of the events of their lives. You give sight of understanding to those who are blind in their sin. You lift up those who are bowed down and you love those who are righteous. You watch over us in a sinful world. And you are a father to the orphan and a comforter to the widow. You do not f allow the plans of the wicked to flourish or to come to completion. You will reign forever and for all generations. Praise the Lord. Amen. My friends, go with God's blessing. And remember, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Acknowledge Him and He will make your path straight. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you now and forevermore. Amen and Amen. Celebrate, to celebrate the 